After many delays, the awaited Black Widow solo film is finally heading our way. The ceremony is necessary. The events of the film, which takes place sometime between Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War, promises to reveal some of the many mysteries behind the character. While she did lose her life during Avengers Endgame by sacrificing herself for the greater good, Marvel Studios decided to give us a glimpse of Natasha Romanoff's past by introducing some of her old allies who still live in her homeland, Russia. So before the film gets released on July 9th, Drop it! He'll do it! Let's discuss 10 of the mysteries that might have a chance to appear in the upcoming film. Want to keep staring at the wall or do you want to go to work? One of the bad guys. Before joining S.H.I.E.L.D. and ultimately the Avengers, Natasha Romanoff, codenamed Black Widow, was actually one of the bad guys. I have no place in the world. Exactly. Originally, she appeared in the comics as a cold-blooded villain who would stop at nothing to get the job done. While this is somewhat the case in the MCU, Black Widow first made her appearance as an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the 2010 film Iron Man 2. The upcoming Black Widow film promises to give us a few more pieces of the puzzle that is Natasha Romanoff. So we might finally get to know a few more details regarding the adventures she had with Hawkeye, who, in the comics, fought by her side against his then-enemy Iron Man, before they both joined the side of good as a team. Will we finally get to know what went down in Budapest? Will it be revealed in the upcoming Hawkeye series set to premiere this fall? Or will we get more Black Widow movies taking us back to her darker days? I vote for the third option. How about you? Now, I'm not quite sure they'll follow the comic's lead for this one, but it can hint about Natasha and Alexei Shostakov's relationship, who we've seen briefly in the Black Widow trailer. The character, played by Stranger Things' David Harbour, was once upon a time married to the Avenger in the Marvel comics. When she was still a student at the secret Red Room Academy, she was forced to marry Alexei, which could explain the age gap between the two on-screen characters. But the KGB eventually had Alexei fake his death so he could take part in the secret project aimed at making Russian's version of Captain America. Through their own super soldier program, they created the Red Guardian while Natasha focused on her studies, which led her to become one of the most lethal spies in the entire world and take the mantle of Black Widow. If Marvel Studios keeps with this origin story, it could make for quite the awkward but funny moments between the film's counterparts as they're reunited to fight against the Taskmaster. Talking about the Taskmaster, a little bird told me that he actually might be Black Widow's brother. What do you think about this one? Yes? No? All of the above? This theory comes from the fact that in the anthology series Shadows and Light, she ended up fighting her long-lost brother and ultimately took his life. In the story, called Freefall, she has to battle Vindictor, a supervillain who claims to be her brother. His beef against Natasha came because according to him, his own mother let him burn while their house was on fire, while she saved Natasha from the flames. While Vindictor's claim was never confirmed to be true, merging his story with Taskmaster could make for an interesting plot twist. After all, the movie seems to have family as one of the main themes, and it's been confirmed that flashbacks from her childhood with Florence Pugh's Yelena Belova will be included in the feature film. A soap opera with a Captain America knockoff, a bunch of Russian spies including actress Rachel Weisz as the Iron Maiden? Count me in. With Russian spy Yelena Belova reprising her role in the upcoming Hawkeye series, and Natasha Romanov dead in order to obtain the Soul Stone in Vormir, everything seems to point at Yelena taking the Black Widow mantle, just like she did in the comic books. While taking a hero's codename after they retire or die is quite a common thing in the universe of Marvel Comics, it's just been recently done with Sam becoming the new Captain America, and will be done again when Jane Foster becomes the new Thor in Thor Love and Thunder. But did you know Natasha wasn't the first Black Widow? We know little about the original one, called Clairvoyant, but the upcoming movie might just answer that question. If you look closely at the cast list for Black Widow, you can notice an actor named Yolanda Linz, who has been featured in a few action scenes for live action ads for Call of Duty and Red Dead Redemption. This highly hints at the fact that she will also play one of the powerful spies, and on top of that, the character she plays is simply referred to as Widow. Will we see the original Black Widow in one of those flashbacks? Most probably. While Natasha repented herself in her time in the MCU, she didn't always act as one of the good guys, even after joining the Avengers. In the Ultimates comic book series, she orchestrated the killing of Hawkeye's whole family, going as far as ending his son while he was holding the poor guy. She then proceeded to betray the whole team, and once she was done, she moved on to a bigger target, the United States of America. Her joining the Avengers was in fact just a ploy to infiltrate and eventually invade the USA. In another twisted event, she got close to Tony Stark, took advantage of the situation to kill Jarvis, and used all Iron Man's fancy gadgets to invade Manhattan. Granted, that wouldn't happen any time in the MCU between films, but something similar involving other characters could happen with subsequent iterations of Black Widow. If Tony, Thor, Steve, and, well, not Bruce, I'm sorry, can get their own trilogy films, why wouldn't Natasha's? 
With the animated MCU series What If coming out just one month after the release of Black Widow, we'll be treated with some crazy What If scenarios like Agent Carter becoming Captain Britain instead of Steve Rogers becoming Captain America. In the What If, Black Widow had her own alternate story where she married Spider-Man. Don't tell that me. As you might have guessed, things didn't turn out very well as she ate a friendly neighborhood husband since she's a Black Widow. Get it? Get it? Anyway, this entry isn't really about that, but it does involve Peter Parker. In The Amazing Spider-Man number 86, which brings us to the year 1963, Natasha found Spider-Man's abilities quite impressive. But instead of asking him to join her, she went for a slightly different approach. She tried to steal whatever tech he had on him. Spider-Man eventually overpowered her, but the spy was quick enough on her feet to run away. While she was seen with the black version of Iron Man's suit in the comics, wouldn't it be amazing to see such an accomplished Avenger equipped with Spider-Man's web shooters? Just imagine, a beautiful killing machine swinging her way through the city. While we know that her mother tongue is Russian, and she can fluently speak English without the slightest foreign accent, did you know she was not just bilingual, but multilingual? After first meeting with Natasha in the Iron Man 2 film, Tony Stark, curious and suspicious as he is, pulls up intel he found on her on one of his iPad-style tables. The file, which is falsely registered under the name Natalie Rushman, presents her false identity's experience in modeling, but also her language skills. Italian? Russian? Latin? Who speaks Latin? The digital file lists that she's fluent in French, Italian, Russian, Latin, and English. While it is pretty impressive, it's not hard to believe for an international spy who's spent her life going undercover in various countries. What's most unbelievable is why Yelena Belova still has such a thick and bad Russian accent in the Black Widow trailer. Don't get me wrong, I love Florence Pugh and I still have nightmares about the film Midsummer. but if Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow can mimic an American accent so perfectly, shouldn't Yelena be able to do the same? Avengers Age of Ultron might not have been the best Avenger film of the quadrilogy, but a lot of good came out of that film. We got to meet Clint Barton's family, which is a touching sequence. This is an agent of some kind. Gentlemen. This is Laura. We were introduced to Wanda Maximoff, who just recently became the Scarlet Witch in the WandaVision finale, but we also got to see a glimpse of Natasha's past as she was training in the Black Widow program. When Wanda, then working under Ultron, has all the Avengers under a mind control spell, Natasha is then taken back to the Red Room, where everything started and the Black Widow was born. We saw her go through physical and mental training, which clearly left a scar on her. We also got to know a bit more about the Inhuman program in the short-lived TV series Agent Carter. In the episode, The Iron Ceiling, Peggy Carter was on a mission to discover the origins of the spy Dottie when she stumbled upon a very early version of the program. Girls were harshly treated, trained constantly, and even slept at night handcuffed to their beds. Natasha lived through all of that, and maybe even worse. Besides the constant shady and mysterious mentions of Budapest, It's like Budapest all over again! You and I remember Budapest very differently. Another moment in the MCU raises some questions. When Natasha engaged in battle with the Winter Soldier in Captain America Civil War, right after he threw Sharon Carter right through a table, she said, you could at least recognize me. You could at least recognize me. In fact, they met way before the second Captain America film during a mission where she blocked him from getting to his target. So he did what any good brainwashed Hydra super soldier would do in that situation. He shot right through her and got the job done. With Bucky Barnes moving forward with his life after the events of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it could be interesting to revisit all the crimes he did across the ages, and some involve Black Widow when she was a S.H.I.E.L.D. operative. While Sebastian Stan wasn't confirmed to appear in Black Widow, he could still, however, have some sort of a cameo. Or even better, his past self could be one of the main villains of a future Black Widow sequel, which would give Natasha the opportunity to reflect on her past life as an assassin herself. For today's last entry, let's return to the Red Room for a minute or so. When Natasha is transported back to the Red Room, the first thing she sees is young ballerinas practicing their art. The scene is cut by images of her undergoing surgery which will make her sterile, shooting a gun on a practice target which quickly turns into a real human, and fighting a bunch of men. All these flashes involve Madame B, a merciless and cold woman who seems to be running the show. What this short yet informative scene tells us is that Natasha suppressed a lot of the memories she had from her time in the Red Room, transforming them into ballet lessons. That being said, this means there's probably still a lot her conscience is kept hidden from her during all these years, most probably to protect her. If Black Widow aims to become a series of films, it has to go back to that inner space and hopefully bring back the evil Madame B. By now, it's pretty sure Florence Pugh has been cast as the future Black Widow. While she may never replace Natasha Romanoff, who we've seen kick ass for over a decade now, I'm pretty sure she'll bring some fresh air to the MCU, along with the upcoming Young Avengers. 